Hi guys, my name is Dr. Rocke and today I will show you how to use strong blacks in comic book drawings or any other ink drawings where you want to achieve a realistic look. Make sure to watch the whole video, there are a lot of tips in there. Worth it. I'm still having troubles with my strong blacks myself, but I learned so much over the last couple of months, so I wanted to let you in on my progress. So you guys can learn it even faster than I did. So at least make sure to subscribe to the doctor. His content is brilliant. Yes, it's true. I already prepared a drawing waiting for the strong blacks. Ghost Rider. When I drew this one, it was the first time in over a year that I did a drawing without the camera on. That was so weird. Come on, come on. I always wanted to move the camera, put it in the right angle, but it wasn't even on. I drew Ghost Rider recently in my Rocktober series, but I actually wasn't quite happy with the result. So here I am, doing him again. Phil Connors, Ned! Also, I wanted to experiment a little bit with my latest version of the chest, and that's why he got rid of his jacket. You can achieve quite cool effects when doing a lot of strong blacks like in this Punisher drawing right here. That's the one I did for my drawing like David Finch series. But at the same time you have to be very careful because it can be too much in no time. First I want to remind you real quick about the basic forms. When a light source would hit this sphere from this angle, just from above, the shade would be like this. When the light would come from this direction, slightly from the front, the shade would look like this. And when the light would hit this sphere from this direction, slightly from behind, like this, then the shade would look like this. So it's always very important to know where your light source is coming from. But I covered this at length in this video. So if you haven't seen that one, maybe you want to watch this one first. So, but now that that's out of the way, let's take care of this drawing. Did you actually think there will be a Dr. Rocker video without me slamming something to the table? No way! No, of course not. Okay, for the proper way to do strong blacks, we will use a brush pen. I have this really great pencil pen, I love it, the link is in the description. But before we go in with the strong blacks like a crazy person, just make sure that you know what you're doing. And if you're not sure, use a pencil to spot the strong blacks first. So you can just use the pencil and try and define the black areas, like this. Goes black. The light source hits from above and slightly from the front, in this case. That could be black, and so on. So the right thing to do would be to use this pencil to spot all those strong blacks. Like I just said 10 seconds ago. And we do it again and again. Where I was saying just don't go in like a crazy person. But I forgot, I am a crazy person. Here's Johnny. So let's do those strong blacks. You got to, got to try a little tenderness. When using a brush pen, you need to have a steady hand and also very good hand control. To help you with that, you have to turn the page around a lot. Just like that. It's always easier to reach the line exactly with the tip of the brush. First of all, it's thinner and second of all, you can see it properly. And what's also great with the brush, you just do this and the huge area is black. Strictly professional. It will take you ages with the pencil. And you can, but you don't have to feel the need to fill this little gap there. Can you see that? because you have to add the line weight afterwards and you can do it easily with the other pen. So don't waste the time on doing this. Not necessary. And overall it's very important to do small steps. Not just blacking out everything, you can always go darker. But the other way around, not so easy. And every now and then, take a look at your drawing from far away. That's very important when doing the strong blacks. 
And another thing that's very important is to leave enough room for your hatching lines. Very often I did the strong blacks and then realized it was a bit too much when doing the rendering. With the rendering lines done, the black area can get too big because it adds on. So keep that in mind. Better to add additional blacks after the hatching process than to mess up your drawing. Caffeine and too much sugar can be a problem for keeping a steady hand. Keep that in mind as well. And also a workout before your drawing session can make you tremble if you work out properly. So better stick to lighter weights or you do leg day when you want to produce a piece of art later. <laughs> to prevent smudging better lay down a piece of paper on your inks like that and then you can go wild in this side without having to worry about ruining the picture. When there are bigger areas you want to black out, you can mark them with an X. So you will not forget about them when you are done with some detailed black work you are currently working on. And when you did that a few times, you will be able to imagine quite good how these areas will look when they are blackened out. That's quite helpful. So try and do that. Always turn the paper. You see how easy I can reach the edge of the line. Just like that. Here we go. Always be aware of the light source and don't do everything right away. You can always go back and first to all the different areas. For example, now I want to work on my chest again to match it to the arm properly. Going back and forth all the time. And don't worry too much about small mistakes, because first of all, drawing should be fun and the first drawings will not be perfect. Not even the 1376th drawing will be perfect. But that's not the point. It needs to be good enough. Also, it doesn't make sense to use too much time on one drawing. Of course, you should take care and you can take ages for a drawing and it, it might work out really brilliantly. But make sure to have enough practice and practice you get with different drawings. More than sticking around too long on one. And sometimes when you don't really know what you're doing, what the heck are you doing? You can cover this up quite good with a lot of hatching. And you don't have to work as clean as I usually do. You can always throw in some patterns here and there. You can go wild. Just how you like it. Depends on the style you want to pursue. In my case, I'm a tattoo artist. And I'm used to work very clean. But even I try to go a bit more messy because I like it when the drawing looks a bit more like having a lot of life in it, you know what I mean? But like I said, it's just a style choice, whatever you like. What's pretty cool with Ghost Rudder right here, his skull is burning from his in. So we will be able to achieve a pretty cool negative space drawing effect. Because usually the eyes, the nostrils and the mouth would be black. But in this case there's fire coming out of it, so it's the other way around. The skull will be very dark. But it's a pretty cool effect, you will see. So the fire produces an extra source of light, you have to be aware of that, which means this will be extra dark. Still I will leave out a little bit of the, of the Adam's apple, 
Usually we would not see him, but it just looks better. Sometimes you should cheat, but you don't have to. If you want to have it look quite realistically, go with that. And move your paper around more than I do. I don't do it that often because you would get dizzy when watching this. But when I would draw without the camera on, I would move it around all the time. Keep that in mind. When doing something like the belt, try to keep it very clean. And also I will leave a rim shot here and there. First of all, we can see it better because this area will be very black lightly, I, I think, because the trousers are black. And I will do this and then I can hatch out from there and this will be black. But don't go too nuts with some patterns or something like that. Not with belts. Looks better like that. Only if you want to draw a very old belt, battle worn or something like that, then you can go nuts. But in this case, try and keep it clean. When you're doing folds on, a, on black trousers like that, it's mostly just doing a million lines. If you're not comfortable enough with the brush pen, you can do a lot of them with a more steady pen later on. And you can also use whiteout. Theoretically, you could do everything in black and then use whiteout, but I guess that's the best method. What are we doing here? You see, it's just a million lines. That's all it takes. And that's a good example. You see where the line is and I want to go there, so I need to use my tip, the tip of the brush. Now we are exactly where we want to be. And the further we go away from the light, the less white areas we want to have. Especially in my case, because the light source is coming a little bit from this direction, not just from above. And just to make sure that I can see where the one leg ends and the other one starts, I will leave a rim shot right here. Although, actually there shouldn't be one, because there's not really a light source. But I think it will look better, and if not, I can always black it out later. And always be aware of your light source. You can see this fold is here, light hits from here, so there's no shade up there because there's a small rim light. But beneath the line there's black already. It's getting lighter here, so I can also put in some more of those folds. And if I think they are too big, I can make them smaller with my other pen later. Plus there will be some hatching. Since this foot is elevated, I want to keep this area quite bright. So I will do mostly hatching. And there it will be black again. Because the light can hit the foot from above. The belt produces a small shade down there. The belt buckle is iron, so I will do some iron effects, but still be aware that the light source is hitting from this direction. This will come to life mostly when I do the really small rendering lines, the really thin detailed ones. But that's all I need for the iron effect. So, these, my friends, are the strong blacks for this Ghost Rider drawing. Which means now I will use my Tombow brush pen, it's the hard tip one, the blue one, to start the rendering. Which goes hand in hand with the strong blacks, so I have to show you that too a bit. And if you're interested in more rendering, check out this video. It's a rendering tutorial. But now I will show you what's important for the strong blacks, in combination with the rendering. When you want to render into the strong blacks, you have to make sure that the distance between the rendering lines is consistent but also quite narrow at the beginning. And towards the light source they can go bigger. 
but like I said before, you can watch my rendering tutorial, I will explain that in depth. You see how it blends? The strong blacks. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's render. The most hatching lines and the line weight is done, so I will use a 005 fine liner from Micron now, which is a very fine fine liner. You can also take a 01, it's almost the same thing, to do some small, small, small details. So let's do that. Oh. I will start with the belt buckle. I told you before I will do some extra fine lines and those will make it look like it's really out of metal. Metal. I overdid it a bit, but it's, it's good enough. And here we go, the finished Ghost Rider. And can you remember when I told you before that this line actually would be black, but I wanted to notice this leg. Um, and here you can see, I just made it darker with a lot of small hatchings. And I think that's a good way to do this. Okay guys, I hope you had fun watching this video. I hope you could learn a thing or two. And if you did so, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. And tell all your friends about my channel, that would help me out greatly. So, see you in the next video guys. I will give you a proper reveal of the drawing. Stay safe and have a great day. Bye! Yeah.